Morning, Chief. Morning, Sergeant. Am I glad to see you? And right on the nose, too. Tired? Ah, uh, these four-hour shifts aren't any picnic. Not when you have to keep your eyes on every face in the room. Yeah, the inspector is as jittery as the warden on execution day. But take it easy. In two weeks, this stuff moves out of town. I can hardly wait. All right, men, take over. Come on, boys, let's get a breath of fresh air. Speak to Mr. Daly, please. Mr. George Daly. Who's calling, Mr. Daly? Oh, it's that Mr. Jones. He wants to speak to your brother again. Let me take it. Just a moment, please. I'll connect you. Pardon me, ladies. Yes? That man who calls himself Mr. Jones is on the phone again. I don't know what the whole thing's about, but it doesn't seem... Yes, operator, put him on. Hello, George. We're downstairs. I'll take care of it right away, sir. We won't detain you, Mr. Daly. We just dropped in to compliment you on the way you're handling the exhibit for us. Oh, thank you, ladies. It's been a real pleasure. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Daly. Goodbye, Mr. Daly. Goodbye. I'm sure it'll continue to be a great success. Oh, I'm sure of that. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Diamond. Could chop a horse with that. I could think of better things to do with it. <laughs> you know, the longer I look at that diamond, the larger it gets. <laughs> out of this. You know very well I bought that pinwheel for Bobby myself. You keep your hands off me. What seems to be the trouble, ladies? It's all a mistake, officer. That pinwheel belongs to Bobby. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who owns that pinwheel? It's mine. It is not. A man gave it to me. What man gave it to you, Sonny? I don't know. He's gone. Uh, I'm the assistant manager, ladies. If you'll step into the lobby, I'd be glad to get both of your boys a brand new pinwheel. There you are, boys. Right this way, please. Yes, thank you. Oh, we'll take care of you, young fellas. Gee, thanks a lot. Stop. What happened? The diamond, Sergeant, it's gone. It was there a minute ago. Stand there. Nobody gets out. Nobody. Turn off that alarm. Now relax, everybody. The biggest diamond in this collection is missing. Since we were all in this room when it happened, everyone here will have to be searched. Now, folks, right up against the wall. Everybody line up, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Daly, but uh, you'll have to be searched, too. Routine, you understand. Uh, would you mind... Oh, excuse me. Right up there with the rest of the folks. Your best. 
your best wasn't good enough, Inspector. Unless the Blue Star is recovered and fast, we're going to taste enough disgrace to last us for a lifetime. You've got a force of 20,000 men to work with. And I advise you to show us some action. Yeah, well, I will, sir. I, I promise you I will. Well, see that you do. Boy, oh boy, he, he sure put us on the carpet, huh, Chief? Yeah, and wrapped us right up in it. This thing's got me. I'm up a tree. You're the only guy I know who can be on the carpet and up a tree at the same time. Uh, yeah, but you said you were up a tree, too. That you had no idea who's I going... haven't. Open the door and let the reporters in. Oh, they'll rip you to pieces, Chief. Open the door. Oh, okay, Chief. Inspector, the commissioner told us... Can I give you a statement? All right, fire away. We want to know by what magic the crime was committed. Who were the guards who were detailed to the Carlton Plaza? We want to know how many people had access to the collection and who they were. And what do the police intend doing? Above all, Inspector, who does the police department suspect? If anybody. I can answer that question. The man who engineered this cunning little theft is the only one in town with the daring to execute it. And that man is Boston Blackie. Impossible. Oh, it is, eh? Blackie hasn't been around for years. The Blue Star of the Nile is worth $500,000. In other words, Blackie has his price. Exactly, and I'm not dealing out in rumors. I'm giving you cold, hard police facts. That's good enough for me. I'm getting to a phone. Me too. Oh, 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 story. Story. Oh. Oh. You're perfectly right again, Blackie. You know, for a man that didn't know anything about legitimate business a year ago, I've got to hand it to you. <laughs> you sure catch on fast. Hey, hey Blackie, hey, look at this. Don't interrupt, Ron. Oh, but Mr. Manley, you've got to please hold. There are 300 you? turret lays on a siding in the Chicago freight yard. But well, Blackie, will now, you... It's going to take us eight days to haul them less than a thousand miles unless you can redirect one of your southern loadings. Citywide police net spreads to capture daring thief Blackie. They mean you. Faraday names Boston Blackie as pillager, a famous gem. Quiet, Ron. What? Well, there it is. Look at it. Read it. What is this, a joke? Well, it's no joke. Faraday's after me again. The heat's on. <laughs> Blackie, you haven't been doing him without telling... Of course not. We're together 24 hours a day. This is a mistake, uh, of course. Why, sure it is. We work here 12 hours every day, and we sleep in the same room together every night. Say, you haven't been doing any sleepwalking, have you? <gasps> Stop worrying, Run. Come on. What are you going to do? I'm going downtown and pay a visit to Inspector Faraday. Well, I, I wouldn't do that. Faraday's liable to put you in jail and throw the key away. He might even throw the jail away with you right in it. Come on. See you later, Arthur. You know, I've been thinking about this thing, Chief, and I don't get it. You haven't the slightest idea where Boston Blackie is, and, and then you go and tip him off that you're looking for him. I just don't get it. When you can't find something you want, you advertise for it. Oh, I suppose you expect Boston Blackie to walk right into this office and give himself up. Is that it, Chief? That's it, Chief. Come in, Blackie. I was expecting you about now. Yeah, for private conference. That's right. That's what I thought. Not a newspaper man in sight. Sit down, Blackie. You too, Rund. You mean we ain't arrested? Well, Rund, it'd be bad form for the inspector to arrest the two men who were going to help him. Have a cigar. Well, right, thanks. Now, that's taking advantage of a beautiful friendship, Inspector. Well, I... Uh, uh, Rund, it'll stunt your growth. I'll have one, Chief. You know, I've come to the conclusion, Faraday, you're a very smart man. Mm. When you're in trouble, you call in an expert. <laughs> you must be on a spot with an eight-foot fence around it. You know I am. I'm not kidding you, Blackie. But I'm depending on you to help me over that fence. Is that why you gave out those headlines? You know you've got me on the front page of every paper in the country? That's the only way I could get you in here. The recovery of the Blue Star is more important than anything else. That's where you come in. Now, you can call me anything you like, but I'm deputizing you as my assistant in this case, and I'm not taking no for an answer. Well, how about regulations? I haven't got flat feet, and I never learned to swing a club. No, but you can wear a badge. Right over your heart. And I've seen one there many times when you didn't even know it was there. Oh, sure, sure. Big-hearted Blackie. All right, Inspector, I'll take the job. Hmm. Whose methods do I use? Yours or mine? Just yours, Blackie, so help me. <laughs> I don't get it. Take your hands off me! I'm not so old I can't get out of a cab without help. Certainly, sir. Huh. Only 70. <coughs> 165, sir. 165. Now stay here and keep your eyes open. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Not at all. Thank you very much. Take me down to Bulletin. Uh, New York Bulletin? Yes, that's right. The newspaper on Park Row. Uh, Park Row? Oh. Of course, I could hire a guide to show you the way. 
Well, I'm awfully sorry, lady, but I'm waiting for an old gentleman who just went inside the hotel. How long have you been driving a cab, Runt? Oh, you got me mixed up with somebody else. Where's Boston Blackie? No, you don't know what you... I don't All know what right, you buddy, you're blocking traffic. All right, lady, hop right in, I'll take you down. Lady! Oh, lady, wait a minute! Do you think I'm talking to myself? I said move on. Yeah, but, officer, I'm waiting for a fan. I don't care if you're waiting for your grandmother. Get going. Okay. All right. Pardon me, young man. I'm Professor Hunter from Hoover University. I, uh, I should like to examine your collection. Sorry, there's no free list. This is for the war fund. But I'm here in the interest of science, young man. Uh, uh, who's in charge of the exhibit? A committee of patriotic citizens. Yes, 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 that I understand. But isn't there someone in the hotel I could talk to? Just a moment. Uh, pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Connect with Mr. Daly, please. Mr. Daly is the assistant manager. Maybe he can help you out. Oh, Mr. Daly, yes. What? Oh, thanks. Mr. Daly's not in his office, and there's nothing I can do. Well, <laughs> very well, I shall buy a ticket. What is it, one dollar? Yes, sir. <laughs> there you are. Sir? Uh, yes, I should like to use the house phone, please. Why, certainly. Just help yourself. Thank you, my boy. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd like to speak to Mr. George Daly, please. Oh, just a friend. Have you any idea where George is? He hasn't been in his office for an hour. Why? What's the matter? It's another mysterious call. Mr. Daly isn't in just now, but if you care to wait for him, his office is on the second floor. You're welcome. Take over for me, will you, Margaret? Are you Mr. Daly's secretary? I'm his sister. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, how very nice for a young man to have his sister working for him. <laughs> I remember when I was a boy... I don't work for Mr. I... Daly. I'm the switchboard operator. Oh. But if I can help... Well, perhaps you can, young lady. Yes, I, I'm Professor Hunter from Hoover University. I've come to talk to Mr. Daly about arrangements for our annual banquet. Oh, well, that's something you'll have to take up with him, Professor. Yes. I'm sorry I startled you just now when I came in. Oh, it's quite all right. I was just admiring these blue camellias. Very rare specimen, you know. Of course, geology is my profession, but botany is still my hobby. <laughs> yes. The, the, the genus Thea Japonica blue is very rare for this hemisphere. Well, you just go right on admiring them, Professor. My brother will be back any minute. Well, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. <laughs> Goodbye.
May I have some Wilson's chewing gum, please? Always the way it is, mister. As soon as you're out of the brand, nobody wants anything else. How about some other kind? Well, I didn't realize Wilson's was such a popular brand. You think it was the only one the way Mr. Daly buys it? Really? She was about 50 sticks at one time. No. I was just telling the bellhop, I don't see how he gets it all in his mouth unless he has a cavity in every tooth. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. How about some triple mint? Well, I'll try some. Yes. Package of King cigarettes, please. Clumsy of me. Oh, beg your pardon, sir, but I seem to be all tangled up. Could no, you help me? Not at all, not at all. You know, it isn't every day that old age gets a chance to help beauty in distress. Uh, how gallant. Perhaps if you took your gloves off. My gloves off, yes, sir. Perhaps would help. <laughs> well, you are in quite a tangle, aren't you? Well, <clears throat> we'll see what we can do here. For a man your age, you have exceptionally firm hands. Mm, oh, yes. Without a single wrinkle, eh, Blackie? Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. I have a little surprise for you, Sergeant. I give you Boston Blackie. Ta-ta! Boston Blackie? Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, miss. I'll take him. Well, this ought to earn you a promotion, McNulty. Don't rush your promotion to jail, Sergeant. I'd like to have our extras out before the other papers get on the street. Bye-bye, Blackie. Well, I'll be... Me too, Blackie. But I gotta take you down to headquarters. That dame's a reporter on the New York Bulletin. Well, let's go. Right. Really, honey, they get older every day. Hold up for another one, Blackie. Smile and show your charm, Blackie. Show us how you look when you were captured by the little girl reporter. <laughs> if that's all you want, boys, you can clear out now. We've got a few questions, Inspector. First, has the blue star been recovered? And if it has, what's possible? The doctor's on his way here now. What's the doctor got to do with it? I hid the diamond in one of my tonsils. Don't let him operate, Blackie. You'll need your tonsils by talking when the pressure's on. Now, you fellas aren't sore because the Saab sister scooped you on the story, are you? Maybe you'd like to explain it. How a big, strong criminal fell into the hands of frail female journalist. Well, that's easy. Boston Blackie is in love with girl reporter. So he steals the blue star to get the bankroll for a honeymoon. Ah, but the girl reporter doesn't love Blackie. So she double-crosses him, turns him over to the cops, and claims the reward. It's a sad O. Henry story, fellas. But swell for your Sunday supplement. If you ever get out of jail, the theater's waiting for you. Thanks. Long, Blackie. Good, Good luck, Blackie. Lots of luck to you, Blackie. I hope Blackie. the pictures turn out all right. Yeah. So long. Well, you can say what you like, but that female Sherlock Holmes from the bulletin has certainly upset the great man's apple cart. I ought to have my head examined. Well, concentrate on the apple cart, Inspector. It's as much yours as it is mine. Well, handcuffs won't hold you, but I hope that dame doesn't keep bringing you back. Oh, forget it. Am I still using my own methods? Sure, sure, Blackie. Well, then in about three hours, you're going to call those reporters in and tell them that you weren't able to hold me in jail. <laughs> Habeas corpus, eh? No, no, you're just going to tell them I escaped. And have me face the wrath of the public? Well, you asked for it, Inspector. It's your baby, and you're going to see it through. Oh, no, no. Not in a million years. I can see the headlines now. Blackie escapes Faraday after three hours in jail. Oh. That Boston Blackie isn't any Superman. Is that so? They captured him right here only this morning. He's dressed up like an old man, but I knew him all the time. Oh, disguise, huh? Yeah, but he didn't fool me for a minute. I was just getting ready to tip off the cops when they captured him. Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> Stay away from the telephone, company. Did you tell me where the switchboard room is? Second floor to the rear. Thanks. But the nursery's at the other end of the lobby. The what? Uh, you can put your little boy there. They'll be very kind to him. <laughs> that isn't my little boy. That's my assistant. That half pint? Why not? I get him for half price. for repairs. Anything wrong with the boards? Anything wrong with those boards? No. Well, how about this one? Maybe. Well, I'll take a look. Carlton Plaza. I'm sorry, but Mr. Adams just checked out. You're not helping that board any. No, I guess not. Carlton Plaza. 
I'm sorry, miss. I just told you. Mr. Adams just checked out. She seems to want to get a hold of Mr. Adams pretty bad, huh? Yeah. He's giving her the brush, but she just keeps calling. Yeah. I know just how she feels. What's the matter? Are you carrying the torch? Who's the lucky girl? Miss Daly. I do? Mm-hmm. This was our anniversary of our first meeting. Oh. I, I got her a little present, but she won't tell me where she lives. Such a nice guy like you. <laughs> Listen, uh, her address is 1236 North Brewster. But don't say I told you. Ah, uh, you're a honey. By the way, what anniversary is it? One week. What's the matter with you, George? It's only the newsboy. Blackie escapes Faraday after three hours in jail. They know who stole the diamond. Do they, George? Oh, listen, honey. You're talking to Eileen, your sister, remember? You've been out till all hours every night lately. You won't tell me where you've been or what you've been doing. Well, so what? So all of a sudden there's a robbery right under your nose at the hotel where I got you the job. Oh, there you go again. Yes, now keep on going again. For weeks now you've been jumping every time a cat walks across the floor. I've watched you at breakfast and at dinner. Oh, George, are you in a jam? I'm no jam. Why don't you keep your nose out of my business and leave me alone? I'm just going to get a handkerchief. You don't usually keep your handkerchiefs in my room. Boston Blackie, shut the door. May I sit down? Thanks. Boston Black? That's right. Any objections? No, but what'd you come here for? You're going to help me. Help you? What do you expect us to do? Help a total stranger who just escaped jail? That's right. You don't think I'm going to rot behind bars and let the police throw the book at me for a bad rap, do you? How does this concern us? I wasn't in on the Carlton Plaza job. Before the police land me again, I'm really going to find out who did steal that important piece of ice. This isn't an accident, you know. Your brother... What's my brother got to do with it? Do you think Faraday is foolish enough to believe that a half-million-dollar robbery could be pulled without inside help? Why, I didn't have anything to do with it. I tell you, I don't know... You don't sound very convincing. Do you think I had a part in that robbery? Cut out the dramatics, fella. Go on, get out of here. All right. But remember, you need help more than I do. <laughs> You're very pretty. What are you going to do? I don't know. Oh. 
Riley. Hello, George. May we come in? Oh, hello, Martins. Sure, I was expecting you. Is that why you opened the door before we even knocked? You weren't going anywhere, were you? No, I, I was just going to call my sister. Well, we want to see you alone. You look like you've been sitting on a hot stove. You aren't nervous, are you? Of course he's nervous. Why shouldn't he be? You did a great job. There'll be a big split in it for you. Now, uh, let's have it. Have what? Have what? <laughs> the little stone, the blue star of the Nile, the one we hitched our wagons to. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I... Well, talk fast. He's stalling. It isn't here. Let me get this straight. You say the blue star isn't here? My sister's got it. You wouldn't be dumb enough to try and pull a double cross on me, would oh, you? I hid it in her bag. I was going after her when you came He's in. He's lying. Well, don't try to outsmart anybody. I'll get it for you. Just give me a chance, will you? It'll be your only chance. We'll give you till 9 o'clock. You hear? 9 o'clock. I know this has been a shock to you, but we'll have to work fast if we're going to help your brother. I found this wad of gum in the orchid room. And this other piece I discovered under a chair in his office. It was a very clever device. You see, after everyone had been searched, he returned to the orchid room and got the stone. Then he hid it again in his office in this other wad of gum. What do you want me to do now? Help convict him? No. We may even get him off with a probationary sentence. I don't believe there is any. Oh, dear. Why, what's the matter? I seem to have something in my eye. Oh, let me help you. Oh, that's very nice. There, is that better? Oh, I think so. Thank you so much. Good. That is You're welcome. <laughs> you came back. This isn't your bag. What's the matter, George? What happened to your face? Get it. Do you hear me? Go back and get it. There was nothing that valuable in it. Whoever exchanged it with me, I'll bring it back. Don't argue. Go find your bag. Well, what are you standing there for? Oh, I'm so glad I found you, Miss Daly. I'm afraid I took your bag by mistake. If it hadn't been for your employment card, I... I was almost hoping you wouldn't bring it back. Yours is so much nicer. Won't you come in and let us thank you? Please, we're late now, sis. You'll excuse us. 
You've done me a great service. You don't use the bag, too, do you? Yes. Uh, no, I... It was just that Sis liked this one so much, and I'd have had to buy her another one just like it. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Oh, we all make mistakes, yes. Good night. What's in that bag that your life depends on? Nothing. No, please, Sis, it's none of your business. No? You had to go stick your nose in something that doesn't concern you. No, you know. Doesn't concern me. You risk ten years of your life in jail for a thing like this. And it doesn't concern me. They promised me a big cut. I thought I could buy you a few things you never had. Maybe a Rolls Royce to drive up to Sing Sing with to see you every Monday morning. Sit down, George. Look, honey. Do a little listening to me for once. You're a lucky guy, George. I know you? No, I ought to have a sister like Eileen. Oh, what a beauty. Even shines at night. Hey, run, take a look. I never thought I'd get my hands on anything as beautiful as this. Boy, oh boy, that is really something. Yeah. Hey, Blackie, look. The radio's on. <laughs> that Faraday wouldn't trust his own mother. <laughs> hey, he cut us off. <laughs> it's a dirty trick, but I couldn't resist hearing what he'd say when he glimmed that stone for the first time. Say, that was a great idea, yours, Chief, getting Blackie. And fast work, too. In ten minutes, the blue style will be safe at headquarters. Have a cigar. You mean it? Of course I mean it. Thanks. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about this, George. I think the court will take it into consideration. I hope so. Please handle it, George. It'll save you a lot of trouble in the long run. No. I know what the police will do. You turn in the stone first, and you can get me whenever you want me. Won't work that way, kid. You better come along now. All right, reach high, all three of you. Outside, run. Keep talking. Your conversation fascinates me. Well, you fascinate too easily. You must be getting old, Blackie, trying to muscle in on someone who's twice as smart as you are. Did you think you could get a better deal out of him than we were giving you? Yeah, it's a much better deal. First come Healy, one of them's got the stone. Well, look what came out of the grab bag. Nice and shiny, isn't it? Inspector Faraday. Hey, oh. Inspector Faraday, hurry over quick. The 5th, 20, 27, the 5th Agnes. Oh, Blackie, look out. Look out, Blackie. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, Blackie. Look at that stuff, Healy. We take the wheel, Healy. We gotta get out of here. Get my bike, Blackie. Break your way out of a paper bag, Martins. You know when you punch, always from where your fist is. Well, you mind if I have a cigarette? Uh, no, no. Keep your hands in your lap, Blackie. Well, even in the death house, they let a guy smoke, you know. Calling all cars. Be on the lookout for Boston Blackie, wanted for the murder of George Daly less than 15 minutes ago. Murder's well armed. Proceed with caution. <laughs> We're not gonna rub you out, Blackie. Not yet. The cops think you crossed them up. So if you're still missing, they won't look for anyone else. Anyway, it won't be so messy hiding you alive. What's charming? Sure. We're gonna take good care of you, Blackie. 
Any particular brand of vitamins you like? <laughs> and now we've got a murder on our hands. You must have had a lapse of sanity to look to Blackie for help. You not only gave him an opportunity to commit murder and walk off with the Blue Star, but you gave him your car, a shield, and police protection for good measure. I had faith in him, Commissioner. That was my mistake. We're not interested in mistakes. I want action. And you'll get it, sir. Thank you very much. See that I do. Oh. You have anything to say to the press, Inspector? What's the dope on Blackie? Shut up. Sergeant, I want you to call every reserve in the department immediately. No man is to get relief, no man is to go off duty until we find Boston Blackie. I want every man and every motorcycle in the traffic department on the job. There won't be a speeding or a parking ticket issued in this town until we find the car in which Boston Blackie made his escape. Now tell that to your editors. Okay, coppers. Make yourselves comfortable. You're liable to be here for some time. <laughs> you know, Rut, the quality of a thief's mind always betrays itself by its suspicions. Huh? Yes. Now, for instance, the ten-cent crook is never sure of his ability. So he always suspects everyone of being a manhunter, a copper. Don't try to sell me anything, Blackie. I'm not the editor of a detective magazine. No. If you were, you'd know the difference between a copper and a hijacker. <laughs> Who are you kidding, Stooley? I suppose your little boy here was shouting for Faraday over the radio just to test his voice. <laughs> Save your breath, Blackie. When a smart operator like you turns copper, it's a sign he's lost his grip. Yeah. Well, in my book, taking the chance on a 15-year rap is hardly the work of a mastermind, especially for a worthless piece of paste. Paste? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your brain's going soft, Blackie. Yeah? Let me show you. Uh-uh. I ditched the car in an alley near the bridge. Okay. Hey, how does that look to you? Well... Now that there are only two of us, it looks to me like 50 G's apiece. <laughs> the copper here says it's not the McCoy. He says it's a piece of paste. Oh, is that so? Well, the copper was going to a lot of trouble to get back this little piece of paste when we so rudely interrupted him. Well, I, I guess we'll have to tell him the truth, Rudd. Huh? Oh, oh, yes, yes. And I guess we'll have to declare them in on it, too. Oh, no, Blackie, I wouldn't declare us in. Wait a minute. Go on, keep talking. This is getting interesting. You think your brain can cope with a gentleman who owned the Maxwell Dines collection? So what? So they use imitations. Expensive, perfect imitations. People pay their money and are satisfied they're seeing the real thing. It's for a good cause, so nobody gets hurt. But the Blue Star and the rest of the real stones are in a vault. They're safe from guys like you and me. What vault? The vault in the Carlton Plaza Hotel. Now, I'm going to let you in on something else. Sure, I've been working for the cops. But what do you think I've been doing? Trying to get this piece of paste. Exactly. Are you nuts? Not if the phony went back in the vault in place of the real one. And that's a sense job for Blackies. Uh, then why declare us in? Well, I have no other choice. You see, I need that. Uh-huh. Go on. Now, wait a minute. I don't convince so easy. How do we know this isn't the Blue Star, just because you say so? No, because you know I know so. Now, wait a minute. Suppose these chumps are on the level. What have we got to lose by doing a little checking? Jumbo Madigan can tell us what we've got. Okay. We'll ask these boys to wait here till we find out. Get up. Get going. Get some ropes, Healy. Okay. I hate to do this to you, Blackie, but we want to be sure you'll wait here. <laughs> Gee, Blackie, the blood's going in my head, and I think my feet are falling asleep. Most of the time, it's just the reverse. Oh, this is no time for joking. Hey, I just heard a door slam. I think they're going out. So are we. Yeah. Can you feel those wires under your hands where the ropes are? Are you kidding? Sure I can. Well, rub them up against the ropes. It may take a little time, but I think it'll do it. Okay.
Here it is, Inspector. I found it about 15 minutes ago, and they really cracked it up. Yes, and on purpose. Well, if nobody got hurt, they sure got a good head start on us. That's what Blackie'd like to have us believe. The hood's still warm, so I've got a notion he's still in the neighborhood. Take a look around here. Your feet. Huh? Hey, maybe I should have untied my feet first. How could you do that? I don't know. Oh, Blackie, my head. Oh, stop complaining. Who's complaining? It's the best pain I've had today. Hey, boost me up, will you? I want to untie my feet. Okay. All right, Blackie. Can you make yes. it? Yeah. Okay. Come on, hurry up. We gotta get out of here. Okay. Here's your hat. We Thanks. got work to do. Connect me with police headquarters, please. Hello, headquarters. I want to talk to Inspector Faraday. Hello? The inspector isn't in. This is Sergeant Matthews. Oh, Matthews, this is Blackie. No, no, it's Blackie, all right. Now, look, Matthews, get a hold of Faraday and have him meet me at Jumbo Madigan's. No, no, it's no joke. A couple of boys we want to meet will be down there. Oh, I know it's no joke. Oh, sure, Blackie. I'll tell the inspector as soon as he comes in. Don't you worry about a thing, old boy. <laughs> oh, those reporters in the press room, they killed me. <laughs> Always playing jokes, and I let them think they're getting away with it. <laughs> There's no use, Blackie. There's a cab around here within miles. There's our taxi rent. We'll save the fare. You mean steal it? No, no, commandeer it. In the interest of law and order, not to mention our necks. Come on. Inspector, we've covered every block in this district. Mm -hmm. Headquarters. Headquarters. Inspector Faraday, get me Sergeant Matthews. Matthews, Faraday calling. Matthews! Uh, yes, Chief. Any reports? Oh, everything's quiet, Chief. Nothing new. Oh, <laughs> some of the boys in the press room tried to play a gag on you about a half an hour ago. I guess I shouldn't even tell you. Oh, do confide in me, Sergeant. Oh, somebody pretended they were black. He said they wanted you to go to Jumbo Madigan's. Say, Chief, maybe it was Blackie. It was an outside call. You dumb ox, we're gonna make sure. Now get down to Madigan's with a squad of men. Get in, let's go. Maybe he's sleeping. Hello, Jumbo. Martins and Haley. And I haven't seen you two in years. Come on in. Kind of a late visit. I was getting ready for the hay. I got something to wake you up. Jumbo. Blue Star of the Nile. How do two small-time chiselers like you get your hooks on this? Maybe this takes us out of the small-time jumbo. Go on, take a good look at it. We want an appraisal. What's that? Now, should I know? This is a public store. You're not trying to pull anything, are you, jumbo? Jittery like all amateurs, eh? But you said you were getting ready to go to sleep. Look, schoolboys, you can go out the way you came in. I didn't send for you. Okay, but make it snappy. The rest 
restaurant's just closing up, Mr. Madigan. You better hurry over there. Mrs. Baxter says you got a bowl of chowder left over, but you'll have to come and get it. All right, I'll get it. For a guy that's wanted for murder, Blackie, you're sticking your neck out. What can I do for you? I sent for the cops. They're on the way. Didn't have those mugs? That's right. Keep stalling them. Tell them the stones are phony. Phony? But tell them that. You keep out of sight. I'll handle them. Got rid of that soup awful quick. I didn't need it. Mrs. Baxter's belly wash. She was going to throw it away anyway. All right, let's have it. This could be an important piece of glass. What do you mean, could be? Come on, cut out the riddles, Jumbo, and give it to her straight. I'll give it to you straight. That ain't the blue star. It's a phony. What? I said it was a phony, an imitation, but a very good one. It must have cost two or three grand to make it. Well, we pissed this right out of the exhibit. You wouldn't have any reason to kid us, would you, Jumbo? Stop trying to play torpedo. It don't impress me. So that's a soup you were eating, you dirty stool pigeon. I don't want your glass, and I don't want any part of you. Taking rewards ain't part of my racket. He's seen too much. Let's give it to him. Hold it. Fatty's gonna help us get out of here. Inspector, the men you're looking for are inside Madigan. No, no, the men I'm looking for are right here. Now, look, will you believe me for once? Just a minute. Is this another one of your elaborate tricks? I believed you for the last time, Blackie. You can tell the rest of your little story down at headquarters. Now, get him into my car. Why don't you take a look for yourself? Oh. If you don't, Inspector, I will. Okay. Lock all the doors. And you, don't let him get away. Come on, men. Send the bulls away, Faso. One wrong word out of you. Hold it. That won't work. Is there any other way out of here except the front and the back? There's no other way out. Get us out of here. He's still alive. Get him to a hospital. Yes, sir. Anything out in back? Not a thing, Inspector. Nothing behind the counter. Clean as a whistle out in front. You look perplexed, Inspector. Yeah, I'll admit it. Blackie sends for me, practically gives himself up, and then I find this. Maybe I better hire a detective. You two wait for the ambulance. All right. Come on. We'd better put something under his head. How about a coat off one of the dummies? Yeah, it's a good idea. Better be awfully careful with him. He's pretty badly hurt. Hey, got your cards? Sure. How about some gin? Okay, fine. This is one of those embarrassing silences, Inspector. I could make conversation by giving you a full confession. I prefer the embarrassing silence. You would. The scenery's awfully dull around here. Couldn't Matthews drive us through the park? You better get used to the scenery, Blackie. You're gonna see a lot of dull scenery from now on. Mm -hmm. He's lucky and escapes the chair. <laughs> Happy little character. Mm -hmm. Do you mind lighting a cigarette for a man who's riding his last mile? Mm, I'd send you a carton if I thought you'd have long enough to smoke them. Yeah, let me help you. Don't move, Blackie. Oh. Uh-oh. Blow out, Chief. What is this? <laughs> I'm sorry, Inspector, but you're interfering with my duties as a police officer. He has no gloves on. He'll get you out, Miss Anderson. Pardon me. 
Oh, pardon me, Matthews. The inspector wants to see you. I'll be there in just a minute. <clears throat> Why don't you stop him? I, uh... Get a key uh, out and unlock the thing. Uh, uh, Hurry up. Come on. Why don't you stay home and write your new paper? <laughs> Pardon me, does Mr. Charles T. Buffington live here? Certainly not. This is a hotel for women. There are no male guests. Thank you. But we are not gentlemen. The two men who came in, where'd they go? I assure you that no man entered my hotel. I saw them come into this lobby. They haven't come out. How dare you infer that my we hotel... We didn't infer anything, lady. They must have gone through there, Chief. I see. This is a respectable hotel, and no such practices are tolerated. Now, look, we're police officers. I've heard that one before. And those men are dangerous criminals. All men are dangerous. We're going through. Over my dead body. Uh, don't be so modest, lady. There's still plenty of life in you. If you ruffians don't leave, I'll scream for the police. The police are here. May I introduce Inspector Faraday and Sergeant Matthews from headquarters? Headquarters? Well, why didn't you say so? Oh. Hey, taxi! that way. Ah, uh, it's no use. What's the matter, Chief? You don't look good. I don't look good. When I'm dead three days, I look better than you do now. Look out. Well, I guess we can go now. Well, I guess we can go, too. deal and end up with this piece of ice. What's that? Well, you told us to make ourselves comfortable. All right, all right. Pull yourselves together. We're going to talk some fast turkey. So you found out I wasn't lying, huh? All right, so you weren't. Now what? Well, the proposition still goes. Give me that piece of glass and I'll have the real one back in 24 hours. It'd take a week just to case that hotel vault. I said I'd have the real one back in 24 hours. And suppose you don't. <laughs> then it's my funeral. And his, too. Your little pal's gonna play hostage till you get back. Go ahead, Blackie. Okay, where is it? Here it is. But don't drop it. It might break. He's coming in here feet first if I have to go to the chair for it myself. Now, what do you want? Uh, package for Inspector Faraday. What is it, a time bomb? No, no, no. The blue star of the Nile. Who sent you here with this? Nobody. Blackie. <laughs> the man who wanted you to have it thought he ought to deliver it in person. Blackie, Blackie. I bet I'm the first guy who ever had to break his way into headquarters. I ought to turn my badge over to you and my desk. There's no time for that. The guys I wanted you to pick up at Madigan's are holding the runt. Well, what are we waiting for? Matthews, get my car and squad them in. Get two squads. You got the run up there alone, and I'm not taking any chances. All right, spread your men out and keep them under cover. Yes, sir. Tell your buddy to come upstairs, or I'll blow your head wide open.
better tell your friend to give me the gun, Blackie. Better give it to him, Inspector. Well, an official visit from the law. You don't get up early enough to outsmart me, Chisler. Go get some ropes, Healy. You're kidding yourself if you think you're going to get away with this. There's a cop downstairs for every blade of grass. A little too late for a bedtime story, Blackie. If you'd have brought any cops, I'd have heard the siren for blocks. Now, you and the inspector thought you'd pull a few heroics and capture a couple of bad men single-handed. Sit down there. Keep them up. All right, put your hands behind you. You see anything yet? Not a thing. Well, keep your eyes open. Yes, sir. Sure is quiet around here. Yeah, too quiet. You worried? Sure I'm worried. The chief gets so tied up in his work. By the time you get out of here, we'll be halfway across the continent. Hey, Paul, look. Those guys weren't kidding. The street's crawling with cops. Okay, my friends, you asked for it. This will fix it. When the fire attracts their attention, we'll go over the roof and down the fire escape. I'm getting a little bit worried. Yeah? Well, so am I. Good evening, gentlemen, and happy bonfire. Hey, Sergeant, the place is on fire. Yes, yeah, burn it. Come on. Thanks. You take care of the fire. Yeah, get me out of this thing. Come on. I think I know where to head them off. Matthews, cover the front of the house. Okay. Give me that. Thank you. Come with me. Drop them, boys. They're all yours, Inspector. Matthews! Matthews! Okay, Chief. Take him down. Well, I got a hand it to you, Blackie. You completed your first mission with flying colors. Coming from you, that's high praise. From now on, no matter what happens, I'll never misjudge you again. Oh, Faraday, if you ever stop misjudging me, you'd make life very dull for both of us. <laughs> oh. Hold it, boys. Good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> she sure led you a merry chase. Yeah. I wonder if she'd mind if I chased her for a change. <laughs> Good night, Ron. Good night, Blackie. Oh, no! Blackie! Hey, Blackie! Hey, Blackie, wait for me! Thank you.